Now, if I had told you then, 15 years ago, that you could have a television had quantum dots in it. Yep. It's going to be 8K. You can yeah. see the water molecule on the antenna of the fly. Two fingers, you could lift it up on the wall. Yeah. The wall, why would we put our TV on the wall? Like all of these things. So it's exponentially lighter, yep. but exponentially more powerful. Like how do you... Oh, and by the way, it's a quarter of the price of the first one you bought. At most a quarter with better performance, right? Yes. And so with all of that, if we had said back then, build an assembly line or build a home to support a 65 inch, 80 inch television and exponential amount of power and you know all the commiserate re re relationship between power and weight and whatever, we'd have been really wrong. So when you sit there and you're having conversations, whether it's an operator like me or up in your channel, you know, you got to fund this stuff. Yeah. You've got to design and operate it. You don't want to. You don't want it to collapse in on itself. How do you manage that conversation? The risk. The when you're trying to sort of get this into people's heads and explain to them, you know, the complexity that this brings and what potentially could be, you know, massive curtailment on the useful life of a data center. You know, mm -hmm. that 25 years without significant upgrades, it may not be 25 years. Mm -hmm. And so it is a really difficult thing to so especially for me, you know, the, it, my company is a software company. You know, what we're doing is, you know, is radically different and sort of is a very capitally intensive um, a, a, a set of work. Mm -hmm. And so it's a different mindset. And so getting people you know, bought into why we have to spend this amount of money for the reliability, for the flexibility, I would say that Oracle has been probably at the forefront on recognizing the potential impact on the way these work, uh, workloads run, uh, what the implications of that could be for the electrical infrastructure, the mechanical infrastructure, the utility companies. You know, we've been putting a lot of effort into that, but that is not reduction in complexity. That is additional complexity. Yeah. That is something that the industry has never had to deal with before. We've been at this a long time, Dave. And so, you know, when we used to talk to the utility company, they only need to know one thing. How much power are you going to need? Really? Right. Not what, not what right. the building is, but really? Right. And what's the ramp rate to get to That's that? Right. That's all they wanted. That's not the world now. The right. world now is, when will you need the power? Like, from the moment it, we go live, right. and what will it look like? It'll look like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, dramatically. Not, not like, not law of large numbers smoothing for diurnal variation. I mean, literally 100 megawatts, 30 megawatts, 100 megawatts, 30 megawatts, forever. Mm -hmm. And that is profoundly different to anything we've designed for and delivered before.